Welcome to Master Sherlock Holmes. We're so glad you're here to be with us tonight. We want to invite you to our 20th anniversary celebration in May, on May 22nd and 23rd at the Clifton Center when we perform The Sound of Music. And now, without further ado, we will need these two aisles, and if you could please silence your cell phones. The game is afoot. Okay. Pardon me, ma'am. 
Yes? I encountered a gentleman out in the garden. He's gone around to the front. What gentleman? His car. I don't know this gentleman. Who's the bloke? Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes! I'm getting out of here. What's the matter? Don't you know who he is? Probably a representative. He's a private investigator. I don't want to see him. If you put me behind bars, to just go, he's a devil that owns. You can't. You don't have anything to worry about. Well, I'll hide. Shall I admit the gentleman? Of course. Find out what he wants. I'll be upstairs. Please come in, sir. Thank you. <coughs> Please have a seat, sir. Thank you. Who is it you wish to see, sir? Take my card to Miss Alice Faulkner, please. Miss Alice Faulkner is not allowed. She's in poor health and will not see anyone. I prefer to hear that from Miss Faulkner. As you wish. <coughs> hmm, fresh fingerprints not more than a few moments cold. Particles of cold that are still clinging to the dial. Good heavens, who are you? No need for long. My name is Holmes. Sherlock Holmes. Not the Sherlock Holmes. Is that very so detective? Actually, I'm a consulting detective. I assist the police with their more difficult cases. Who's one out the safe? How should I know, Mr. Holmes? There's only one man in London who rooms in a hotel for by Coleman, and is also a master at safe cracking. Sid Prince. Sid Prince? Never heard of him. Nevertheless, I suspect he's somewhere about. Please fetch him. I'll try, sir. Oh, and do try that front. He's probably watching the house. Yes, sir. <coughs> Mr. Holmes. You are Miss Alice Faulkner? I'm in poor health, Mr. Holmes. You are Miss Alice Faulkner. I'm in poor health, Mr. Holmes. Please be brief. Miss Faulkner, you have been dealing with a reputable insurance for regarding certain letters? That is my business. Incorrect. It's my business. The insurance firm has engaged my services. You wish me to set a price? I wish to speak with Miss Alice Faulkner. <laughs> So you are. Don't try my patience, Mr. Larrabee. I know you and your husband are keeping poor Miss Faulkner a prisoner in this household, and unless you produce her at once, I shall inform the police. I will have you know that the French authorities are quite anxious to learn of your whereabouts. James! James, bring in here! Hurry! You're a clever man, Sherlock Holmes. Clever? I am not a clever man, I am brilliant. And the sooner the criminal household she realizes, the sooner London will sleep in peace. Beast. Over there, what? Who's he? Sherlock Holmes, <clears throat> detective. He's working for the insurance company. Don't reach your pistol, Larry. It would be a foolish gesture. Pistol? Always reaching for me pie. <laughs> You've been mistreating this poor girl. There are marks on her wrist. I wouldn't tell him anything if I was you, Alice. All he wants is your precious letters. Do you wish to lodge a complaint against these people? I will handle this matter in my own way. I implore you, Miss Faulkner, if you release the contents of those letters, there's no telling what damage you'll cause. Damage? What do I care for damage? I'm only interested in one thing, money. The insurance firm will pay you a fair price. I'm not interested in a fair price. You may tell your employers that the letters will cost them thousands and thousands of pounds. May I see the letters? You'll have to find them first. Quick! There's a fire below stairs! Smoke coming out! They get your way to higher! Because I have the matter under control. When a woman thinks her house is on fire, she instinctively grabs the thing which she values most. A married woman grabs her thing, and a married one, jewelry. Or in this case, letters. I am undone. My only wish is to help you. You won the clutches of two villain tools. You're clever. Brilliant. You have the letters. You've won. I have the letters true, but I have not won. Only a grease fire. Form it, start it. Tipped over a pot of lard. You see, Miss Faulkner, I cannot take these letters from you unless you hand them over to me voluntarily. Why not? Because that would be stealing. You cannot have the letters. In that case... You're mad. I'm not happy with Miss Faulkner's decision, if that's what you mean. I advise you to leave this house at once. I'm not afraid of them any longer, Mr. Holmes. If they attempt to seize these letters again, I shall destroy them. Eat them, burn them, tear them into shreds, but destroy them I shall. There is no profit in ashes. You are a remarkable young woman, Miss Walker. I shall go to my room. Stand aside. I take it you won't take this matter lightly. If any more harm shall come upon Miss Faulkner, I shall hold the two of you personally responsible. You have been warned. No need to show me the door. 
I'll find my own way. Just and everything is going so well. What are we going to do? All clear? Not with that. Shut up, Holmes, onto us. And the letters? Holmes didn't get them. We ought to go upstairs and take those letters by force. What good would that do with Holmes in the set? Besides, you heard her. So destroy them. Not a penny for our trouble. Holmes is on the case. You two need help. There's one man you've got to see. Who? Moriarty. Moriarty? Professor Moriarty. The Napoleon of crime. He hates Sherlock Holmes with the right passion. He'll get them letters for you and stop that super right in his tracks. Sounds good. Well, what are we waiting for? Wait to. To the professors, of course. Come on. Contact in the Tottenham area has been holding out on us again. This collection from your protective society is fallen off by two percent. I suspect the two percent is wound up in our contact's pocket. I believe we can dispose of his future services. Our range for his body be found in the mail sack, North Scotland. Yes, Professor. What about the informant who is working undercover on the jewel heist? To dispose of the mail trace. As usual. One of the dark workers in your employ was over the next year he was a close friend of Professor Moriarty. <laughs> Moriarty has no friend. Moriarty is the friend of no one. Have him attended to. Yes, sir. See that his disappearance is noticed, have it spoken of. The workers in the docks will wonder whatever became of their mate. Whatever they conjure up should not be a source of the truth. You are a master psychologist, Professor. Anything else? Ray, you've got men, I've got the trial closed in next. Ah, uh, yes. Thanks to young Sherlock Holmes. He'll be the crown star witness. Holmes has interfered with my plans once too often. I do not intend to see him testify. <laughs> Will you deal with him in the usual way? You surprised me, my dear Joan. Holmes is not a usual human being, therefore do not be dealt with in the usual manner. <laughs> Commence. This is Bassett. Admit her. The professor will see you, Mrs. Bassett. From 
support. A respectable hall from various suffragette meetings held throughout the city. Clarify, respectable. <laughs> Not as good as the hall from Tower of London from the Tower of London. Ah, Professor. The Tower of London job comes along once in a lifetime. Perhaps next time I can arrange to steal the tower. <laughs> Anyone out there? Sid Prince. Who? Sid Prince, the safe cracker. Mentioned to open the vault for the stock exchange. I recall. Any assignment for this evening, Professor? I shall get word to you. I, it seems that we may I may require use of your special talents. Oh? It all depends on the outcome of a conversation with a certain private investigator. We've had no trouble with the police, Professor. My suffragettes are well trained. Whenever it looks as if the jig is up, we stage a minor riot. When it's over, the onlookers have been relieved of their wallets, bubbles, and beads. If I had used you for one of my previous assignments, three of my best men would not be standing in the dark with Sherlock Holmes breathing down their necks. If women get the vote, it will be the end of our masquerade. I do not intend to see such a valuable asset as our suffragettes lose their cover. To this end, I am working diligently to ensure that women will not get the vote. I understand. And it said, you will receive your cut in the usual manner. Always a pleasure talking with you, Professor. Remember me, Professor? You left traces of coal dust on the vault of the stock exchange. I did. What do you want? Well, I come across something that might interest you. Commence. Seems this couple. Names. Madge and James Larrabee. They're wanted by the French police. Blimey, Professor. Is there anything you don't know? I don't know you've come across that might interest me. Well, they've met a young woman who has letters that would put the Prince of Bohemia in a rather awkward way. That's yours. Where are the Larrabees now? They're waiting. You brought them here? Here to my secret underground office? I, I brought you Larry's. I do hope you're right, Sid Prince, or the Tims will have you for an overnight guest. Joan! Admit the Larrabees. Yes, Professor. I won't do nothing to harm you, Professor. You know that. You can trust Sid Prince. I trust no one. That's why I will never be defeated. What is this business you have, the Prince of Bohemia? All don't know is we want to tell you. After all, this is our game, not yours. Is it? Well, not even certain I want to be here. Silence! Here yeah, now, I don't want to be talked to like that. Evidently, you do not seem to understand as to whom you are speaking. <laughs> don't anger the professor. I'm not afraid of him. You had better be, James Larrabee. Or else you'll never live another day. I have my methods. Careful. Sit down. I was telling the professor about the Prince of Bohemia. Can you help us? Who is the young woman in this case? Alice Faulkner, stubborn. The sister died in despair over the prince. But not before the prince wrote many love letters. We planned to sell the letters to the insurance company. Everything was going fine. And all of a sudden, like, they call him Sherlock Holmes. That name again! Where are the letters now? Alice has them on her person. She threatens to destroy them if we make a move. Holmes has seen the letters? Only the small packet to return to Alice. You have no time to open the envelopes. You can make forgeries? Of course. We have an employee next to me, Southern Forger. Foreman by the name. Tie up a counterfeit. Tie up a packet so that'll tie up the packet so it'll look exactly like the real packet Holmes held in his hand. But why, Professor? I have my methods. I will want the counterfeit package ready at eleven tonight. It'll be ready. You haven't said anything about the business arrangements. You will have the opportunity to sell the packet tonight to Holmes for a good round sum. You will take a hundred percent, and I nothing. Nothing. Nothing <laughs> except. No. Nothing except the packet of real letters. Careful, Jimmy boy. Don't anger the professor, I tell you. See, I believe, Mr. James Larrabee, that you were acquainted with one Alf Waxman, a well-known blackmailer. I know, Alf, sure. We all do. 
seen around lately? Now that you mention no. And you won't be seeing him. He displeased me. <laughs> he won't cross you, Professor. I do. I sure hope not. I would hate to see you in the widow's weeds. You won't have any trouble from us, Professor. We'll get what we can from Holmes. What about the real letters? The disposition of the real letters will be of no concern of yours. Yes, sir. Whatever you say, sir. The interview is over. Joan! I bid you good morning. Professor, I was wondering if you might have one small friend of the good old Sid Prince. The interview is over. Sir, whatever you say, sir. I believe weather we're having. Bohemia, splendid, excellent, capital. <laughs> Professor Moriarty here. Bring my cab around front. I journey to Baker Street. Who shall I want? Baker Street is his residence, I believe. And you will go there yourself. I will go there myself. I intend to offer him peace or death. Either way, Moriarty wins. <laughs> You're a marvel, Professor. You a human marvel. Circulation. Are you speaking to me, sir? What? Who? No, no, my good dear. I was commenting on the helpful bit of London Fog. It's underrated. For some maladies, it can be most beneficial. Bless me, sir. You talk like an educated man. I am a doctor. Watson, my name. Not the famous Dr. Watson, the one that writes about Mr. Sherlock Holmes. The same. <laughs> I'm a great fan of this, Dr. Watson. Of course, I can't read myself. But I'm afraid to pronounce all the words. Good to hear. You and all Mr. Holmes do have great adventures. I never have got over the case of the second band. What's that one, well, did you? Positively creepy it was. Scared me more than the case of the Sussex vampire. Always happy to do all of you. Don't charge me, Dr. Watson. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. It's very kind. Matter, sir. Inexpensive. Bless, bless me! Baker Street's turning into a gypsy buzzer. I've matches from India, and some from Sweden. A person can never have enough matches. You make them sound like the staff of life. There you go, that should keep you quiet. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Person can never have enough matches. Foolish child. Matches. Who needs matches? The sharp? The professor is counting on us. Cover all the alleys in the big street. You may require our assistance. I can decoy the policeman on the corner. Good. But don't attract any undue attention. Stand ready when and if needed. Five flowers, only a penny if you want one. String screeching halfway up the block. You should have had an ear for music. I have an ear for music. It's more violin playing that makes me wish I were dead. 
<laughs> Surely my playing isn't put you in this agitated state. It's the neighborhood. Baker Street is a perfectly respectable neighborhood. Almost too respectable for my tastes. Too respectable? My dear Watson, I know that you share my love for everything that is bizarre and outside the conventions and humdrum of everyday life. <laughs> Baker Street hardly qualifies. It's comfortable but routine. You wouldn't think so if you had to run the gauntlet I just did. Match sellers, ribbon hawkers, suffragettes, push carts. Busier than a fish market at dawn. Baker Street is hardly an area for commerce. Therefore, I suspect that the suffragettes, push cart peddlers, match sellers, and ribbon hawkers are not as they seem. Or being ribbons again. I see you visit at Valley's bookstore in the hour and were unable to receive your weekly copy of the London Review. Oh, what the devil did you do that? Those traces of brick clay on your shoe. You see them in an excavating in front of Lally's, and that particular shade of clay can only be found on that one locale. Also, the clay is not set up to dry. Amazing. Since London Review is the only reason you visit Lally's in the first place, and the homebound periodical could barely fit into your metal bag. I can only smile that they were sold out. You astonish me, Holmes. Elementary, my dear Watson. <laughs> I met a flower woman down the street. Lovely creature. A great admirer of your exploits in my literary town. Uh, Mr. Holmes, sir. Yes, Mrs. Hudson. There's a gentleman here to see you. Oh, that would be Inspector of the Shore of Scotland Yard. He's not a man. How did you know that? It's of no importance. Please show the lady and gentleman. Right away, Mr. Holmes. Oh, I do hate to mention it, but some of the neighbours are complaining about your target practice. Indeed. I show her she wouldn't use my walls for that sort of thing, sir. It ruins the wallpaper. Quite right, Mr. Hudson. Quite right. Just run in some woman. The Strahd is merely acting as a police escort. The gentleman in question is in fact the Prince of Bohemia, and the woman is Lady Irina Hunter, a distant relative. How can you be sure it's them? I saw them coming out of their carriage when I was looking out of my bedroom window. Pray, come in. Delighted to see you again, Lady Irina. My colleague, Dr. John Watson. Dr. Watson? Delighted. This is... Softly. The walls may have ease. Pray, be seated. We've come directly from the insurance people. They tell us you've taken complete charge? Correct. What progress have you made, Mr. Holmes? <laughs> Minimal. Minimal? Considering your reputation, that's hardly encouraging. We'll you disappoint me. We'll pay you any sum. My professional charges are upon a fixed scale. I do not bury them except when I remit them altogether. We are desperate. <laughs> your Highness, did you love the sister of Miss Alice Faulkner? That's all in the past. The future is all that matters. I see no reason not to answer. I loved her deeply, Mr. Holmes. I would have married her. Nonsense. You're too young to know your own mind. Infatuation, nothing more. Did she know of your true feelings? Yes. You say that you would have married her. That she knew of your true affection. Hardly the motives to self-destruction. I still have never been able to understand why she did it. Curious. She had everything to live for. What matters now are those letters. In the wrong hands, they could be lethal. Well, I don't think we're followed. No matter. It appears to me our time here has been wasted. Mr. Holmes reports minimal progress. Lady Edwina, are you sure you? Holmes knows what he's about. You'll forgive me if I do not share your enthusiasm. The stakes are too high for anything but positive results. I believe we ought to return to the insurance people and register a complaint. I trust that we may expect more than minimal progress in the near future, Mr. Holmes. Please forgive my aunt, Mr. Holmes. She has been under a terrible strain. I can't bring myself to reprimand her. I understand. I'll meet you shortly down there, Your Highness. I'll have a word with Mr. Holmes. That lady at Wayne is a cold one. <laughs> Her motives are clear. She only wants to protect the family honor. The even the prince's bodyguard ain't my idea of ideal police work. I consider it an honor. I've got him to worry about. And the Robert Tower of London. I sure hope you'll give me a hand with that one. An audacious crime. Robbery at the Tower of London. That would make it an excellent title. Sherlock Holmes and the robbery at the Tower of London. Sit down. Give me the message. Foreman says they've got him making a bundle of forgeries. They? You mean the ladders? Yes. They're making copies of Miss Hopkins' letters. I take it you understand from Foreman the seriousness of this business? He has enlisted my aid. 
I am your ally, Mr. Holmes. Good show! Poor Miss Faulkner, they told me she was demented. I'm quitting at once. No, no, you mustn't do that. No? I want Miss Faulkner to know that I wish to buy Paul's letters. Tell her you overheard the matter being discussed between Lara and the informant. If you say so. But don't let her know that I know the letters are counterfeit. But why? I have my reasons. If you wish to work with me in the future, I shall demand complete fidelity to my orders. In other words, my dear, he doesn't want you asking any questions. You do wish to help, Miss Faulkner? Oh, yes. Foreman's right. You mustn't be seen. I suspect the house is being watched. Watched? <laughs> Careful on your way out. I find the second work exciting, Mr. Holmes. I was afraid you'd say that. Off you go. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Holmes? This apartment has more traffic than Victoria Station. The game's afoot. Talking riddles again. Do come in, Mrs. Hudson. A match girl spot news my sister, Mr. Holmes. Dawn Eddicks. The match girl? No, your sister. I have to go to her. No telling when I'll be back. Watson and I can manage. Could I assist with anything? Oh, I don't think so, Dr. Watson. It's her nurse more than anything. I'll just bring her some roasted tea. We'll be quite all right. Little cold liver on the ice in case you're hungry. Cold liver? I could have sworn it. I'll be expecting a visitor any minute. He will not enter this house unless he knows I am completely alone. Follow Mrs. Hudson, pretend to escort you to the tram, and then double back to the street. Do not enter this household unless I cry out or a gunshot disturbs the cop. What house? No need to argue. Do as I say. Hurry! <laughs> What's all the mystery? Never tell me a thing. People popping in and out! <laughs> I find that the violin relaxes me. Hand me a violin and I can begin up to 30 minutes of miserable weather, and still more miserable the ways of our fellow man. I do find the same solace in higher mathematics. Are you saving it, poor client? Do make yourself comfortable. You're not surprised to see me, then. Hardly. You saw for Jetson and gathering in the byways of Baker Street for the last hour. You know about them. But then, of course, I would expect nothing less from the great Sherlock Holmes. You flatter me. I never underestimated you, Holmes. You and I are both connoisseurs. We have been fencing for years. Our pond grows smaller and smaller. We grow together like two greedy old pike. Either I finish you, you finish me, or we choke on each other. Either way, one of us must go. I take it you have a proposal. Join with me, Holmes, in an alliance. An unholy alliance. I may yet tempt you. Jewels from the Tower of London. Stock manipulations? Loot from robberies? You disappoint me, Professor. You and I both know what you desire the most. Power. <laughs> Soon I will have enough power to commit the greatest crime of all time. <laughs> World War. Millions will be made. Millions would wish to buy more power. Kings, presidents, emperors humble. A glorious spectacle, Holmes. The world in flames. I will never let this happen. If you will not give, if you will not help me, then you must give your word that you will never again interfere with any of my plans. And if I give no such assurance, destruction. <laughs> if I were assured of your destruction, I would, in the interest of the public, cheerfully accept my own. I shall miss you, Holmes. <whistles> I fear I shall deprive you of that pleasure. You see, the Stordner's men are gathering as many of your game as they can catch in the street as we speak. Oh, come here next. No. I don't know how you hope to put your grand illusion into effect, but whatever the case may be, I must let you run free, so that I can hound you and discover your plot. You have seen fit not to only reject my proposal, but to do so with irritating smugness. You have made insulting references that I cannot allow to pass. <laughs> you may have won the first round, Sherlock Holmes. The second will fall to me. You have been warned. The game's afoot, Moriarty. I will not rest until I have you behind bars and your plans are ruined. You have been warned. At this time, we shall observe intermission. Five pounds for dessert. <laughs>
House of Commons denies the petition to hear the vote to women. Suffragettes right outside the British Museum. Read all about it. Scores robbed by unknown assailants outside British Museum. Professor, 
Have you got me something on this? Don't like that Professor Moriarty. Too spooky for my taste. Cool, 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 cool. What's that? Cool, 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 cool. Holmes? You? <coughs> <coughs> Sounds a bit gassy. What? The delicate thing, aren't you, Alice? At the moment, it's my place of business. Can't you get in here? I followed you in a cab. What are you going to do? Inform the police? I know what you're up to if that concerns you. You're going to sell counterfeit letters to Mr. Holmes. Or try to. You plan to warn him, eh? I will not let him be swindled and deceived. How do you plan to stop me? I could buy you off. What makes you so protective of Sherlock Holmes? That is my affair. An affair of the heart, maybe. <laughs> You've placed yourself in danger coming here. How much would you get? The real letters. Have you got them with you? No, but I can get them. You think he's your friend, don't you? He's not. Otherwise, you won't be coming here to buy the letters. Fake letters? Ah, oh, he doesn't know that. Before he buy any letters, he has my permission. He won't get the chance. What's that for? You'll see. Here he is, Higher up and get them. No, please! Don't struggle, dear. You don't make me irritated. Wait! I'll tell you where the weird letters are. Don't trust her. Just promise not to go on with this. It's too late. Holmes will be here any second. You know what to do. Come on. No, please! Have you no shame? Can't afford it. <laughs> make sure she can't cry out. We know our business, Mr. Larry. You two are the plus set we won't give you problems. <laughs> Finished? Meet and tidy. I see my fallen pieces. Cool, 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 cool. Now that has to be Holmes. I do wonder why the criminal element's so famous, the police said marshes. We're seeing your dots are too public. What rats favor these marshes? Maybe that's the connection. Never shy with the insults, are you, Mr. Holmes? Not where rogues are concerned. Got more message, I see. Obviously. I picked this place because it was neutral territory. Rubbish. It's one of Moriarty's caves. I've been here on various occasions dealing with Riff Raff. Moriarty. Never heard of him. As a liar, you rank amateur, Mr. Larrabee. I tell you, I've never heard of Moriarty. I'm here to discuss letters. They're sitting right in front of you, Mr. Holmes. Miss Faulkner has consented to this sale. On the contrary, I believe she knows nothing of this affair, so let's submit her name from the discussion entirely. What makes you think she's in the dark? Your every look, tone, and gesture. You think you can read me like a book? A children's book. Get on with it. <laughs> How much would you get? One thousand pounds. Five. I brought the sum with me. I won't take any less than five, I'll tell you. Listen, my time is quite as limited as yours. One thousand pounds. If you wish to sell at this price, make it known. Otherwise, I shall bid you good evening. You give me two. One. Ah, well, why could One thousand pounds it is. My letters? Pay for and deliver. No, I've got you, Larry. You'll get ten years for robbery. Robbery? These letters. You don't even have a witness. Miss Faulkner herself, intermingled with the escaping odor of gas, is the unmistakable scent of Jacqueline. Where have you hidden her? Pay no one said what a rat. When you're behind bars, the professor will have lost one more incompetent crook. A whistle. A bit theatrical, isn't it? Yeah, who's got the upper hand? I've won. I've uncommon fighting techniques in the Orient. My hands and feet are dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk and go and get down. Well, play it safe. Bring it and girl. Give us any trouble, Mr. Holmes, and the girl goes first. <laughs> They can't be trusted, Mr. Holmes. <laughs> I recognize the loss. Mrs. Bassett in the game of kind of its suffragettes. Sid Prince in the destructive gas house again. <laughs> well, what are you waiting for? Toy him up. What's it going to see who's behind all this? He knows the best professor. No matter. Anyhow, the professor's a joke. He 
gave me a message for you. Indeed. He presented his kindest compliments and wished you a pleasant journey. Jen, what is she talking about, Mr. Holmes? A pleasant journey to the other side. <laughs> Most evil man in London. I suspect he wishes the marriage to take place. That's why he's taking an interest in the letters. I don't understand. Four minutes. If the marriage takes place, he can produce the letters proving that Prince Carl married under a cloud, that he employed deception. Go on. This affront to the royal family honor was a man's satisfaction. Satisfaction? War. War? Three minutes. Miss Faulkner, your mess sister made an admire not as you might think, but at the hands of a hired assassin. Can I believe that? Two and a half minutes. I know Moriarty's methods. Although we will soon be going out together, I feel I hardly know you. You are here, doomed, because of me. I cannot help but feel responsible. These things happen. If only you had stayed out of the case. When Moriarty is involved, matters demand my presence. Two minutes. And this is goodbye. Nonsense. I shall free myself of these bonds and survive. How? In Tibet, I studied the thought concentration of the holy monks. They had this incredible power to shrink their hands through intense meditation. Meditation? You haven't the time! Um, <laughs> Hurry! Um, oh, um, oh, hurry, please, Mr. Holmes! Um, 90 seconds! Um, Too late! Never! Thank heavens! Proper reading is a great boon to mankind. It's a shame so few men and women know not breathe properly. That and concentration, of course. I will have to try it sometime, but not now. Meditation never fails. Do you think you could hurry along, Mr. Holmes? You are a brave young woman, Miss Faulkner. At the moment, I'm a very frightened young woman. We must escape. After you, Miss Faulkner. There are only seven, sir. What do you want to do besides?
prescription. It should help with your headaches and some... I didn't quite catch the name. Miss Gibbs. Miss Lillian Gibbs. I thank you for your time, although I'm sorry to hear that Mr. Holmes is at home. I get a lot of fans coming here wanting to see me. Just a glimpse was all I wanted. I was intrigued. You have been intruding on his privacy. <coughs> sure he's not here. My dear young woman, I have already told you. Who's is not here? I am not in the habit of lying. I didn't mean to appear rude. It's in a Baskerville for Baskerville. Baskerville. This way. I won't take any more of your time. It's not a thing the matter with her. Do sit down. <coughs> what seems to be the trouble? Are you quite all right? Desperate for help. You must come in and show our comms for a return. I, I have no idea. What's the trouble? Perhaps I can assist. My uncle Sir Henry was recently killed by a gigantic ghost hound. What? On the ghost hound, did you say? On the moors outside the manor house, the village is safe, the family curse, and hunt the basket. Good gracious, this is not like a proper English ghost at all. My brother Sir Henry fixed the life of the inheritance. I must speak to Sherlock Holmes. Oh. My brother Sir Henry is fixed to die, I know it. I'm so frightened. Oh, come on now, we <laughs> dearie. Let's have a hot tea while my son will do the wonders. Excellent idea. Perhaps we can have your tea, Holmes will return. Oh, girl. Gigantic ghost town. What's next? <clears throat> oh, what the devil, Wolo? Of course we're alone. What are you doing coming in that way? I wanted to make certain Mori a song. Then why didn't you come in the front way? There must be a certain mystery regarding Alice in the Baker Street. You see, he means to kill me. You mean, in here? He missed his chance in the Plumstead Marshes. Were you mixed up in all that? In a fashion. Any unusual visitors this morning? Some poor girl complaining about a dog. Dogs? And and a woman who called herself Lillian Gibbs, but looked suspiciously like the description you gave me of Madge Larrabee. Excellent. Undoubtedly here to see if I was in hiding. But not just tighter. Miss Hudson! What about that letter business? I informed Prince Carl and Lady Edwina to meet me here within the hour. With the Moriarty on the prowl? What better time? Oh, uh, Mr. Holmes, I didn't hear you come in. That is what you may expect to hear when I do not wish to be heard. Uh, huh? <laughs> <laughs> do be so kind to accept the cabin on the corner. The cab's went on the corner, Mr. Holmes. Send that business for them. I believe you'll find one better this morning. Inform the cabin that you will have a tenant who wish to go to the following address. 106 Harley Lane. And who's going out? I am. But you just came in. Do you hurry, Mrs. Hobson? Yes, sir. But I wait for you, sir. 106 Harley Lane. Why? That's the name of the insurance firm that hired you. Correct. You are going there with everyone coming here. Correct again. Hello, what's that? Some medical supplies I had delivered. Might do, it's heavy. Might do for what? Do stop asking questions and give a hand. <clears throat> What? That is so soon. Who? No, those are not the footsteps. Jasmine. Pray forgive me for having shown you some instructions. You are a woman of strong will, Miss Falkland. You wouldn't allow me to thank you the last evening. I expect no thanks. But I did inform you that I had an important business meeting here in the salon. Shh. What is it? Shh. Hurry, Miss Falkland. Play patience. Turn your back to the visitor. What visitor? Watson, I rely on you. Hurry, my dear, hurry. Yeah. Oh, there you are, my good man. I wish to go to 106 Harley Lane and then the Victoria Station. But do be careful with that, it's quite. I, I can manage. Now, about these dizzy spells. They give me no relief. When did you first notice this condition? A fortnight ago. Would you like a hand? That might help. Perhaps I should move to the conference. Alright, what well, I'm going to break this. and transit just don't... What? Wait, where are you going? Stop! What's happening? Stop. Mr. Holmes, why have you put handcuffs on that cabinet? Gavin? No, Miss Falkland. Allow me to introduce you to the author of all the evil that's transpired. Professor Moriarty. Oh, I'm swim. Steady, my dear, I'm here. Now's the time, Miss Straw. Coming, Mr. Holmes. I am sorry you never had the opportunity to finish me off. That makes two of us. I doubt I would have ever reached Victoria Station. So do I. 
Wait like clockwork, eh, Holmes? Here's your man. Oh, permit me to introduce you to the lad his butler, Professor. He's one of my agents. London will sleep easy tonight, thanks to you, Mr. Holmes. And may she always do, sir. Have you ever heard of the lad's lad? Yes, and the husband, too. Excellent. Not only will I have the opportunity to pass the guy against your men, of course, but against you as well. Take him away, Mr. George. I curse you! And I, Professor, return the compliment. <laughs> <laughs> what would I do to him? The gallows, I trust. I received my message. Excellent. Who are those men? Two were reasonably respectable citizens, and the evil-looking one is a minor. Minor criminal? It was Professor Moriarty himself. We have more serious matters to discuss. <laughs> more serious than Professor Moriarty? Pray, be seated. I prefer to stand. <coughs> Could we get on with this? At once. Do you, or do you not, have the letters? I have a letter at a cost of one thousand pounds. What are you up to, Mr. Holmes? What's wrong, Carl? These are not the letters. What? They are forgeries. Cleverly done, but forgeries nevertheless. You said. Mr. Holmes, in spite of your supposed cleverness, they have tricked you. You disappointed Queen Victoria. Moriarty's won. I'm ruined. Surely this does not mean you may not recover the real letters. I'm afraid so. Prince put such trust in you. The insurance people told me I could count on you. Do you have any idea what this will do to international affairs? This will be a slap in the face of your reputation. I am ruined. Ruined! You are not ruined. Your hands. I'm going to get out of the letters within your hands at the hour. Well? Well? Oh, are they genuine? Yes, quite genuine. Your reputation is secure, Mr. Holmes. But what of those other letters? The forgeries? Holmes' methods are unorthodox. <laughs> You say so, Dr. Watson, but I really don't understand. What matters now is that we have the real letters. I hope you'll understand the strain Mr. Holmes has been on. Naturally. I shall inform the insurance firm of our complete satisfaction. You're too kind. You have been invaluable. <laughs> I'm such a clumsy person sometimes. <laughs> we are somewhere to be. I understand. I'll show you. When you told me of this important business meeting, you knew I would come here. Yes. And when you purchased the letters from Larry, you knew they were counterfeit. Yes. And I did hope you would come here. But before you continue. I detect a hint of romance in your voice. The houses of observation are remarkable. If ever I had time for love, if ever my heart could reach out to another. Don't stop. Alice. Alice. You forgive me, Mr. Holmes. <laughs> and you are? Matt Baskerville, my brother is Sir Henry Baskerville. Niece and nephew of the murdered Sir Charles Baskerville? Yes. I know the case. Only this morning, my brother received a letter of one day. He divided the case. Got it, guys. Not more letters. There's not a moment to lose, Miss Pascal. Hurry, I'll follow. Goodbye, Alice. <laughs> Think of me as one of the stately homes of England. Fascinating to visit, impossible to live with. <laughs> Watson, come along, Watson, the game is afoot. <laughs> I shall never forget you, Sherlock Holmes. <laughs>